A while back, I made a video on Kirby's Down Air. To sum up, I talked about how it's very overrated by the general Smash Bros. community, and I think it really opened up a lot of discussion about the move. While some felt it was overkill to create an entire video essay about a single move, it felt necessary to get my point across. And my goal of that video wasn't to take a stance on whether or not it was Kirby's worst move, it was more so to show why many Kirby players feel that way. However, many people who watched still couldn't wrap their head around how the move could possibly be worse than Kirby's hammer. And this is when I realized that a big part of the problem wasn't just Kirby's down air being overrated, but actually Kirby's hammer being severely underrated by the community, with almost as many misconceptions about this move as there were for down air, even among top players. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not claiming this move is a great move or even average. I mean, if you take a look at all the side beasts in the game, most of them are pretty decent and have very obvious uses, whether it be for recovery, killing, or zoning. Taking a quick look at the roster, the only ones that really come to mind that I think are definitely worse are Yoshi's and maybe Game & Watch's. If you took away most characters' side B, it would be pretty detrimental to their kit, and for Kirby that's not really the case. Removing Hammer would let Kirby do most of the same stuff you're used to seeing Kirby do. You can watch top Kirby's and see them go games or even sets without pulling out the hammer once. And this may lead you to the natural conclusion that this move is useless, but I'm going to explain why that's not true, or even close to true. And in my opinion, most top Kirby's could probably be using it a little bit more. But I'll be the first to admit, I did sleep on this move for a while. I probably have contributed to some extent of the misconception that this move is useless, so I apologize for that. But if you think the move is useless, you're probably using it wrong, like I was. And to show that even top players don't know much about this move, let's hear what Esam has to say about it. This move doesn't exist. Literally. How are you ever going to hit a side beam? Ever. It's so bad. Again, it's not useful for shield breaks because charge forward smash is just stronger. It's not useful as a juggle tool because you can just back air. There's no use for it. Literally none. Kirby has the worst side beam. Now what he said is almost all false. It surprised me since Esam has played around with the character a bit and has a really solid Kirby. I know he's known for some of his weird opinions, but this isn't just a case of opinion. But fortunately he pretty much summarized all the misconceptions about the move, so it gives me a chance to go over them. And the point of this isn't to make a jab at Esam, he just happened to provide a great learning opportunity for everybody. See, the problem is, most people just think of this move how they would a smash attack. And if you look at the frame data, hitbox, and kill power, it simply looks like a bad smash attack, at least when used on the ground. Sure, you can turn it around and walk with it, but that alone doesn't make it useful. If you're using it similarly to a smash attack, like as a punish tool on a whiff move, or trying to read a roll, or catch a landing on the ground, you're generally better off with Kirby's actual smash attacks, which come out quicker and are less punishable. So I can see why it's viewed as useless, but this isn't how you should be using the move. So let's break down what Esam said, and start off with a blatantly false statement. It's not useful for shield breaks because charge forward smash is just stronger. Now this just isn't true. Hammer is one of the best shield break punishes in the entire game, killing as early as about 15%. Esam probably mixed it up with the fact that uncharged hammer is slightly less powerful than uncharged forward smash, depending on the situation. But a charged hammer is one of the most powerful moves in the game, stronger than a regular warlock punch and a fully charged bowser forward smash. But how are you ever going to get a shield break with Kirby? Unfortunately, they got rid of the grounded hitbox for stone when you use it from the air on shield, leading to less shield breaks in ultimate. Sometimes you can get one from a forward smash after an aerial, or just on a weak shield with a smash attack in general, but those rarely work. Phantom has a great video that goes over some shield break setups with Kirby if you want some more info about those. But Kirby's most reliable shield break may actually be in his hammer. To get one, you take advantage of the double swing from the air. It can break a nearly full shield and is best on taller characters, since a lot of short characters won't get hit by both parts. But it works on shorter characters on a platform. This can sort of be used to tech chase your opponent, as many will instinctively throw up shield when they see the hammer out, which can lead to a decently practical shield break. Another guaranteed hammer is from a jab lock. 
If Kirby gets a lock at higher percents from, let's say, a late nair, late back air, maybe down tilt, Kirby has enough frame advantage on the lock to land a hammer after a jab, but not from a down tilt. And after about 80 or so percent, you can't lock with down tilt anyways, so a jab and hammer is actually optimal if it can kill. This is slightly useful for not stealing other kill moves and actually does more percent than forward smash, so it could even be used at lower percents potentially for a tiny bit more damage while still getting your opponent off stage. It might not be super practical, but at least it's not completely outclassed. Now let's talk about this part. Literally. How are you ever going to hit a side beam? Ever! ESAM makes it seem like the move is nearly impossible to land. Now there are cases where this is true. In the neutral, yeah, there's almost no reason to start charging the hammer, especially against projectile users that can just hit you out of it. Kirby has pretty bad mobility when charging the hammer, so in the neutral and in disadvantage, you really don't want to use this move at all since there is a very simple counterplay by your opponent. But there are many situations where hammers are not that difficult to land, even against a good opponent. One of the best uses for hammer is ledge trapping. Now this is much less reliable on Wi-Fi than in person, as the extra frames make some reactable getup options unreactable. But if there's a platform like on Battlefield, or the more preferred small Battlefield, you can potentially react and catch all getup options, landing a kill at insanely low percents. And when there isn't a platform, I like to use it when I've conditioned jump from ledge for my opponent. When you pull out the hammer, jump is a very common option, and it can be covered by the aerial double swing, which is much more rewarding than other aerials while being pretty easy to time. Just to note, you will not get the double swing if you have a full charge. Surprisingly, it's pretty hard to punish a full hop double hammer swing. I often do a back air right after to catch my opponent trying to rush in. You can sometimes even catch a getup attack or neutral getup with the second swing. It's surprisingly good, and I don't know why I don't see this used more. And if you charge it long enough, you'll get super armor on the swing, which can beat out getup attack, which opponents love to throw out when they see you charging hammer. From the full charge, it's invulnerable on frames 2 to 10 and has super armor on 11 to 17, which is not too bad. Now what if your opponent just sits on ledge and lets you take percent from holding onto the hammer? Well, you can just do this. So. Tech chasing in general on a platform is a great strength of hammer. Take a look at how easy it is to tech chase after forward throw near a platform. It can also be turned around pretty quickly to catch a roll if needed. I constantly use this when I get a jab lock, but I'm not able to kill with a forward smash. I instead throw out the hammer, which my opponent gets ready to DI in and starts holding towards me. But this leads to a roll, which I turn around and nail them with the hammer. Maybe not the most optimal option, but definitely a great way to demoralize your opponent and get in their head. It's also a good tool for catching opponents' jumps when recovering. Most opponents feel pretty safe throwing out a jump in this situation, but that could be a big mistake. Really, just jumps and landings in general can get punished by Hammer because of its double swing, and with how surprisingly little end lag there is after, I find myself punishing my opponent more than I get punished for it. Another situation I like to use Hammer is right about here. My opponent is coming down and has a few options. Once I see I have the Hammer, they may panic air dodge, which can lead to a very easy kill. They may also try and land with a long-lasting aerial to beat me to the punch, or they may just plan on landing with a fastball in the shield. I love jumping up and doing the double swing of hammer. It's a surprisingly low-risk, high-reward option that can land an early kill. This is optimally used when your opponent is around 70 or 80% where there's a huge reward for landing it. If they're at higher percents, you're probably better off looking for other killing options, though. So Kirby's side B is far from a useless move. Is it a good move? No. Most other characters have a better side B, but saying it's completely outclassed by other moves is far from the truth. Now if you're using it on the ground just to throw out as an attack, yeah, you'll be way better off going for something like forward smash. But if you want to tech chase on a platform, ledge trap, catch a jump, get a fun jab block kill, read a roll, punish a shield break, or maybe even break a shield, Hammer can do all of that. 
I know those have some pretty niche uses, but it does them very well. And I know you could also talk about the positives of just about every move in the game or make a video like this for them, but so many people don't even realize that Hammer has two functions, let alone half a dozen. If you're a Kirby player, try using it more and see some of the crazy early kills you're able to get. Check out my streams on Twitch and you'll see that I land Hammer kills surprisingly often. I constantly see Kirby players like SK and Phantom putting out clips on Twitter that show off some of its very practical usage. So again, if you're planning it on using in the neutral, no, stop, especially against people with a projectile. But an advantage? Try it out and see what your opponent does. And sorry if this video came off harsh on ESAM, you can't expect someone to know every little detail about every move in the game, but I thought it was a great way to showcase some of the great fun things about the move. Thank you so much to my supporters on Patreon. Consider supporting so I can keep making videos like these. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing that too. It's free and helps me out a ton. But thank you so much for watching. Peace.